Alright, so I played a game recently called I Wanna Hug at Gator. Okay, first of all, I recommend it. I feel like... I think after playing this, I might realize that I'm actually a sucker for dating sims. And I don't like that fact. Hence why I don't really go out of my way to play them. Either way, this game hit me very hard, and it's... Boy, is it impactful. It's not flawless by any means, amateur for sure, but... Damn it, it hits all the right notes. What is it about? A human transfers to an art school for dinosaurs for his last year of high school. A loner and a loser, he decides to change everything about himself to hopefully live a life to the fullest. With a new stylish jacket, he hopes to make friends, study photography, and maybe, just maybe, find that special somewhat that makes waking up in the morning worth it. What did I enjoy? Olivia. I can just stop there, really. Her character... Good lord, it's impossible not to be emotional about her. I love Olivia. The entire game, the entire story, is about this nameless, faceless protagonist. The name, by the way, is Incognito. I'm deadly serious. The actual myth is the other characters and how they interact with each other and the protagonist. And the most important bit is her. And Olivia is just done so damn well. I don't have the right words to describe all the things she's made me feel. I feel like I've experienced a crush for the first time. I'm sure there would be people, possibly plenty of people, who wouldn't feel the same way. But to me, I just... This is all too much. I... Okay, it's just a rambling. I'm astonished by the writing and the execution of this one particular character. Her issues, her emotions, her ways of dealing with it all. How flawed she is. It's beautiful. I am truly astonished. Aside from that, I'd praise the actual story, which wasn't terribly unexpected or that complicated. I mean, it's high school drama, it's difficult to bring brain-shattering twists and developments to boggle the mind, so I simply wouldn't claim that it's breaking new ground here, but it's executed well enough that I do praise it, especially that um, event, huge emotional event, halfway through. I refuse to spoil it, but when you see it, you'll know it. It's big. It, it's handled with care I rarely experienced in most form of media, actually. Another thing I'd mention is animation. These games are generally seen as very bare bones when it comes to such thing, and this isn't an exception, for the most part. But there are a couple of scenes where do the short uh, a couple of scenes where shortcut scenes do play. Especially impactful is the one where somewhere near the middle of the story. It's just so messy, emotional, impactful. I very much enjoyed them all, but that one stood out in particular. I'd avoid the spoilers and just say, axe. And I do wish there were more of these cutscenes. I can definitely think of a few more scenes where, which could have used the same treatment. I hope there would be an update in the future where this does happen. Also, this is a bit of a negative and a positive. The certain flair when it comes to writing. Like I said, the protagonist is the work incognito, split into three words. There are also obvious references to Go Goodbye Volcano High which is something I talked about separately. And also certain titles used here and there, which made me cackle. Like War Club 40,000. War... Club. God damn. <laughs> then the fighting game references and jargon. I'm pretty sure there were a couple of memes snuck in a, sim in a subtle way. These things can be obnoxious, and I can see them sticking out like a sore thumb for people, but none of them really took away anything from my enjoyment. They were there, they were very few, and, well, quite frankly, mildly amusing. What did I dislike? Well, writing sometimes take a, takes a dive. It's a kind of writing that's done by an amateur who needs an editor. It's not exactly a polished product, so much so that I could also recall five or more misspellings without going out of my way to spot these. I generally miss them fairly easily, by the way, so there are probably quite a few more than I've noticed. The character's de depth and motivation is also a little lacking, I suppose. It feels like the player is supposed to read between the lines quite a bit, especially early on. But I'm just not seeing the actual lines doing the trick. And I'm talking about characters who are not Olivia here. Generally it works fine, but it's hard to word it well. Like I said, it's the same problem. Amateur writing. And this isn't necessarily bad. It's clear what whoever worked this... Whoever worked on this, whoever made this, got the passion out of a vazoo and it shines through, but there is just needs to be a bit more attention to details and experience to make this as good as it could possibly be. 
Also, this seems by design, so this is a bit of a personal problem with the dating sims in general, but I did not enjoy how the choices were treated. Essentially, there are correct choices and the incorrect ones. If a player picks the wrong ones, they get the worst ending. To a point where I actually spoiled myself and read what happened. Bad things happen. It's not as horrific as other games of this type, but considering my feelings about Olivia, it's gut-wrenching to think about going through some of these events or these endings. <clears throat> it doesn't feel like results are what I'd have in mind when I pick a certain choice. This is this is awkward without spoiling anything. The gist is that the choices don't feel satisfying or varied in any way. Choice of games is generally a much better place of how I think the branching paths should be done. Or Sir Brante. Or Teenage Exa Colonist. Or... Hell, I can probably keep giving examples. Just as what the game feels like it actively punishes the player for not picking the right choices. Instead of giving the player the choices without any of them being right or wrong. It's not a roleplay, it's just about figuring out the way to the best ending. There's also only a single... storyline, I guess let's call it that. It's a dating sim and there is only one route. Olivia. The game is about romancing her, and there are no choices about that. Either romance her and have it be sappy, or romance her and be a bloody sociopath. I'm definitely lacking experience with dating sims, which is by my own volition, but my assumption is what they generally offer at least a couple of romance paths. But it's not like the game is short. Suhoshin, for example, a visual novel I've talked about felt like maybe quarter as big as my playthrough of a single ending of Vani... Vana Hagrid Gator, goddammit, I can't keep saying Vani, it sounds stupid. And there are four endings, so there's definitely some length here, and I would definitely... If I were com to compare it to Suhoshin, yeah... By that gator, that's, that's the much better game. So anyway, it took a while to write this thing, and it probably shows. I'm more all over the place than usual, I'm more emotional than usual, it's... It's just I feel like there is a lot of potential here. Like, serious possibilities for greatness in the future. But right now there are noticeable flaws, and I, I'm not sure I articulated them well enough, or even if I picked up on them all. There's also the fact that this all ties into the history of Volcano High. And I wonder how much passion there was in making this just out of spite. To try and stick it to the other developer. A rivalry. A big budget release versus this small passion project. Anyway. It's... Anyway. 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 <sighs> sometimes I wish I could just talk to these people and get their sides of the story. And sometimes I wish I could just put together whatever I think of eloquently instead of communicating like a dorky teenager. Perhaps this is why a love story set in high school hit me so deeply. Caveman on truly succeeded in making me care for this paraplegic dinosaur. Shed tears and audibly gasp. Maybe I'm just an impressionable idiot. Maybe I just...